By now, you've likely seen our journey. Coming from outright failures in 2012 when Joe, after winning, was disqualified for wearing my race bib, to now, 10 years later, changing the sport of cross-country skiing forever. But our longest tandem ski up until this point was only 15 kilometers. For undisputed redemption, we'd have to ski the American Berkebeiner, the largest ski race in North America, a distance of 55 kilometers, almost four times our longest ski through a mass of skiers hoping the course marshals don't pull us from the race. After all, because tandem skiing is such a brilliant innovation to the sport, many in the Berkey administration would surely attempt to take us down. Fortunately, we had spent months preparing a layered defense against those out to get us. The first of those layers would be our legal consultant, Kyle, who flew in from DC to continue to prove that tandem skiing was well within the rules laid out by the International Ski Federation. White Castle? Yeah. Thank you. Is this, this has the slider in it too? Oh my God, amazing, thank you. Yep. Here you go. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now that our first layer of protection was in position, nothing could go wrong. I know, right? Except for when, the morning of the race, Joe slept in too late. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. And I was not about to tandem ski alone. I'm sending so nicely. You're a hustle, man. We're not going to make her start at all. Despite having to pee in a bottle to save time, with minutes to spare, we made it to the start line. This is the iconic event where thousands of people come to in the US. That gun goes off, and it's just like this unbelievable rush of energy. Things were going phenomenally well. After skiing nine kilometers, the only mishap was Kyle accidentally giving Joe my bottle of urine from the drive-in. <laughs> Doing great. We're looking pretty good, and as long as they finish, I think we're, uh, we'll be okay. As of now, it appeared as though we were leading the tandem division. Keep your strap on. But course marshals were starting to catch on. Word could get passed all the way up to the highest order of the Berkey administration. And that could be the end for us. Fortunately, I saw this coming. Back in January, I went to interview the executive director of the Berkey himself for an undefined video project, in hopes that he would give me an on-camera response that Joe and I could use as another layer of defense. So I asked him what he would do if someone tried to stop a cancer-surviving war veteran from skiing the Berkey. You know, if somebody said, you can't do it. Joe and I are neither cancer survivors nor war veterans. So after we finished the interview, I turned the camera around and secretly recorded myself asking a different question. What would you say? Then, like the greatest reality shows on television, edited the footage entirely out of context for our own benefit. What would you say to someone that's trying to stop Joe and I from tandem skiing the Berkey? You know, if somebody said, you can't do it. I think you'd have not only a team of 35 employees that would say, what in the heck are you talking about? But I think you'd have a whole region of Wisconsin saying, we'll do whatever it takes to make it happen. I, of course, checked this over with our legal consultant, Kyle. Is it legal to edit footage to make someone say something that they're not actually saying? Yes, it is legal. Then I loaded the re-edited video clip onto my phone and packed it into my water belt the morning of the race to be played for a course marshal if they attempted to remove us from the race. But by the time we hit double O, the halfway point of the race, where the classic and the skate trails merged together, we encountered God's greatest failure, skate skiers, who have lost the ability to care about anyone except themselves, their own race, and their own equipment. Here I 
Yeah, he crushed it, man. Like any other tandem ski pair, without four poles, we would likely be cut off for time and forced to drop out. But little did we know. Our lawyer would place himself in a perfect position. Hey, can you get two of the same length? With a spare pair of poles. How am I going to classic with those bad boys? Run with me, Kyle. Go. Run with me. And after receiving a donut hole, we were off. But even a donut hole wouldn't stop what was about to happen to us. Once we realized that skate skiers thrive on breaking other people's equipment, we chose to ski in the left track to protect ourselves. The left track, unfortunately, would not protect us from ourselves. Luckily, Joe's face broke our fall, and both our bodies and equipment were spared. It takes time getting up. Um, yeah, that hurt real bad. Oh, that hurt. Oh. All right, we're back in action. We were back in action, but as any Berkey skier knows, at a certain point past the halfway mark, nothing stops the darkness from settling in. Encouragement from our fellow classic skiers became warped. <laughs> Turns out this endeavor was not only mentally taxing, but physically exhausting as well. So after getting a much needed feed at one of the final aid stations, we were back in the game. Going? Yep. Yep. Cool. cool. All right. We had a really nice. <laughs> I don't trust anybody. <laughs> Isn't that just how you usually are? Because we were skiing double this time, the Berkey darkness had also doubled. But that just meant, on the other side, the light was twice as bright. I tell you, that sun feels nice and warm finally. Our combined 40 years of ski experience was no match for most others around us. But to get across the lake, past the final few kilometers and into the final stretch, we needed only one thing. I got it. Oh, it's a little stiff. Oh. Now that we had successfully crossed the finish line, we were in the most danger. After all, this was the moment just 11 years ago when Joe and I were disqualified. Fortunately, I saw this coming. Back in October, when Joe introduced me to the idea of tandem skiing, I knew even if we could do it, there would surely be a campaign against us. So for protection, I sought a job at the most respected local news channel in the Midwest. Once I was in, I suggested a story the newsroom just had to cover. Yeah, I guess we just are able to, you know, turn it up for the camera. <laughs> With cameras pointed our way and a primetime slot for our feel-good story to air, nobody dared bet against us. We wanted to tell you about a man who once finished with the best time, but didn't win the race. From hero in headlines to young man in trouble. That was 11 years ago. And the finish line. Leaders 
outside the line. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. Hey, dude. I think that you're wearing my bib and I'm wearing your bib. <laughs> What's it say in the back? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Despite avoiding disqualification, we were not officially recognized in a new tandem category, so our results stood in the mid-600s, over an hour and a half back from first place. It wasn't exactly the victory we had hoped for. But at least one good thing happened. Ben Pop, our arch nemesis and the executive director of the Berkey, reached out to us, showing that everyone, however deep it's buried, has a heart. And that's when I remembered something. Tandem skiing is not at all how Joe planned to win the Berkey. They were never going to officially recognize a new category for us. This was all just an elaborate scheme to get exonerated for the 2012 Berkey bib switching incident and therefore reverse the disqualification 11 years later and finally win the Berkey. So now that you've won the Berkey, had that taken away, and then won the Berkey again, what are you going to do tomorrow? I'm gonna go to White Castle. Next year? I think we can make it into the Elite Wave. Love their shrimp nibblers.